I see mostly two areas for, that are interesting, um, uh, the blockchain uh, activities and AI, and then especially the combination of both uh, have the most potential, I'd say. I'd say everything related to, um, you have mostly two areas in banking, right? One is front end, one is the, the back office and the requirements are different. So in the front end, I see a lot of natural language processing uh, activities, um, and they will have the, the highest return, I would say, also on investment. In the back office, it's much more diverse, right? Uh, you have all these uh, legacy systems that have to be dealt with, and um, a lot of optimization, um, automation of processes, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of room in banks, you know, a lot of the banking systems are 10, 20 years old, and to replace them with, with modern AI is a, is a major task. You have cloud migration, for example. Um, I'm working in both fields, in more narrow AI applications for banking, but also in AGI and uh, alternative AI. In these last two disciplines, you will see probably some quantum leaps very, very soon that will solve problems that haven't been able to be solved in the past. The narrow AI field, although, is uh, dominating still the market and will so for, for a certain period because it's a more proven technology. So, but I think the, the, the short term will be more narrow AI, deep learning, these kind of things, but mid-term, long term, it will be more advanced AI technologies. I think I, I quickly mentioned already the, the AGI and the AAI, I think that's the big fields in the future. So um, the current AI models, they're all um, uh, models that are derived from, from the brain, how the brain works. Uh, but they are more interesting models these days, especially for distributed systems, swarm intelligence and so on, where you look more at colonies like ants, how they work, how they operate, how intelligence emerges in these things. And even if you look at bacteria, which have been around on Earth you know, for billions of years, way before we humans were there, they can be extremely smart, they can self-organize, they work together. So these are new paradigms for AI that I will be using very, very soon. Yeah, I think one of the most interesting uh, companies that I know of uh, is again an Asian company and I'm involved in that as well. I uh, want to make a little bit of advertisement. <laughs> um, no, um, the, the company itself um, is providing a platform for AIs in general. So instead of uh, you working with one AI, you work with this platform and then you, you um, use the service of this AI, but this AI in itself then uses other AIs in the background you don't even are aware of. I think that's a very cool approach. It's a, it's a, a general AI approach and a very powerful one because it's kind of, it has a self-organizing effect and it has an underlying uh, economy, you know, because these AI modules pay each other for their services. So this is one very cool uh, area. A lot of other areas I think uh, worth mentioning are especially everything around messaging system and integrated AI in these messaging systems. But again, um, the Asian model there is a bit different from the European model because in Asia you have much less uh, privacy concerns and, and regulations and rules, right? So you can do things in AI, with AI in Asia, you would not be able to do in Europe.